All right, so now we're on to document B on page 57. And as you can see, document B is the source of the document. It's adapted from The Lost Colony and Jamestown Droughts, written by David Stahl and others. And it comes from Science Magazine, April 24th of 1998. Science Magazine, by the way, is a serious peer-reviewed journal. And this means that articles in it are open to criticism from other professional scholars uh, and historians. And this is a practice that encourages accuracy in reporting. This tree ring study has influenced how historians think about what went wrong in Jamestown. Let's start by looking at the note at the top of the document. The note says, this study determined rainfall amounts by examining tree ring patterns in old cypress trees growing near Jamestown. Uh, bald cypress tree, uh, trees lived uh, hundreds of years ago and grew in southeastern Virginia. Uh, in recent years, tree ring chronologies going back 800 years have been made available for the Jamestown area. So this study determined rainfall amounts by examining tree ring patterns in old cypress trees growing near Jamestown. Every year on the chart leaves a growth, or excuse me, every year leaves a growth ring inside the trunk of a tree. A wider ring means uh, plenty of rainfall and good growth. A narrow ring usually means less rain. A zero on the chart below means average tree ring size and therefore average rainfall. So for example, if you look at the chart, um, it goes from 1560 up to about 1660, okay? And here is the rainfall index uh, on the left-hand side going up. The zero, okay, if you were at zero in any year, that would indicate uh, average rainfall. So it's going to be up for you folks to determine what uh, rainfall amounts above zero mean here and below zero mean down here. Um, so just bear in mind that studying this document, studying this uh, rainfall chart, it's going to show you the amount of rainfall that we're able to determine from tree ring data in years from 1560 up to the year 1660. And again, the number on the left is going to indicate the uh, amount of rain above or below normal. Okay, some content notes here as well. As one would expect, rainfall in the tidewater region of Virginia fluctuates above and below the average. What this study shows is that low rainfall periods coincided with hard times in Jamestown. And if you look at the arrow here, this arrow points to about the year 1609, 1610, and you'll see in 1609, 1610, you've got rainfall well below the zero mark on the chart, which would indicate rainfall well below average. Also, written settler records from the years 1608 and 1609 refer to bad corn years for both Jamestown and the Palatine Indians. John Smith wrote in one of his diaries that the Indians complained extremely of their own wants, which suggests, again, um, poor rainfall resulted in bad corn crops for both the Indians and the Jamestown settlers that farmed. And finally, for content notes, bone fragments found on the fort grounds by archaeologists suggest that during the starving time winter of 1609, in 1610, conditions were very bad. Jamestown survivors, as we have seen in uh, the video that we watched on Jamestown, Jamestown survivors those years ate their dogs and horses, and quite possibly rats, and even, horrible as this sounds, even the corpses of the recently buried dead uh, were, were eaten during that starving time period of 1609 and 1610. Okay, so now that we've looked at the document and we've read the note, let's look at the document analysis questions below the document. Remember, when answering questions that follow the document, 
the first place you're going to look is in the document, including in document B, the note, which is going to provide important information. First question, what does the zero line represent on the chart? And what is indicated by a sharp spike below the zero line? Again, place to find that information would be right in the note section uh, above the, the chart. Look at the years, question two, 1580 to 1640, during which period did Jamestown suffer its longest unbroken period of drought or the longest period of drought without a break uh, with, with rainfall? And if you look in and if you study the document, it should be pretty easy to recognize the period between 1580 and 1640, which Jamestown suffered its longest period of drought. Question three, in the winter of 1609-1610, Jamestown experienced what settlers called the starving time. Based on this document, what inference can you make about the cause of this starving time? Again, the document deals with rainfall and drought at Jamestown. What inference or what educated guess can you make about the cause of this starving time in 1609-1610. And the final question is, is there any way lack of rain might strain English relations with the Powhatan Indians? Explain. Again, question four is asking you to kind of think outside of the document and try to come up with a reason or a uh, one way in which a lack of rain might actually strain or make English relations or Jamestown settlers relations with the Indian tribes uh, poor, how it might strain relations. How might rainfall or lack of rainfall make the relationship between the English settlers and the Powhatan Indians uh, poor? How might a lack of rain make that relationship strained? 